Good afternoon from Beijing and good morning to our viewers in Pakistan. Welcome to the CCG Global Dialogue Series. And today we are going to discuss a topic of profound importance. Uh, we have seen very interesting and some would say very uh, unprecedented changes in Pakistan. Pakistan recently uh, voted out through a vote of no confidence the former Prime Minister Imran Khan, who was indeed a cricket leg a legend and someone who had been in government for over three years. What led to his downfall is an important question, and there's a lot of speculation currently about this development. And then we also have, of course, the new Prime Minister, Shehbaz Sharif, younger brother of the former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, who has experience working with CPEC. He has been the Chief Minister of Punjab, the biggest province of Pakistan, thrice. So with the new cabinet that was just announced yesterday, and 10 days into these changes having uh, taken place, what can be expected from the new government? What are the challenges that they currently face? And of course, perhaps most importantly, what are the shifts in Pakistan's foreign policy? And as being in Beijing, uh, China and Pakistan being time-tested partners and friends, the China-Pakistan economic corridor is also vital. What can we expect to see moving forward for CPEC? For this, we have with us uh, Senator Mushahid Hussain Sayyid at the keynote speaker for today's event. And actually, Senator Mushahid Hussain Sayyid uh, requires absolutely no introduction. He has been uh, very active uh, in China, obviously, as a senator in Pakistan. He is currently elected senator and member of Pakistan's parliament. Uh, he is also the chairman Senate Defense Committee of Pakistan. And between 2015 to 2018, he served as chairman Chairman Parliamentary Committee on the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Another thing uh, about uh, Chairman uh, Sen Senator Mushahid Hussain is that the first think tank in Pakistan focusing on China, the Pakistan in China Institute, which as he uh, as he famously is quoted saying it's his labor of love for China, has played a very significant role. And uh, even uh, recently, uh, China's President Xi Jinping personally conferred on him the prestigious Five Principles of Peaceful Coexistence Friendship Award at Islamabad in 2015, so still fairly recent. And uh, another fact is that he has authored three books on Pakistan's politics and foreign policy. So thank you so much, Senator Mushahid Hussain, for being with us today. And we look forward to understanding the developments in Pakistan. And uh, this session is also about having an interactive dialogue, basically with Chinese scholars to understand what are the pressing questions? Uh, what, is, uh, what is being projected from China's side? What are the key concerns? We have shared interests in the region, of course, stability in Afghanistan. Afghanistan being one of the core aspects. And obviously, the, the region overall uh, can be affected quite a bit by, this, by these political changes in Pakistan. So we are looking forward to a very uh, insightful dialogue with our three panelists who are with us right now. First of all, we have Vice President of the Center for China and Globalization with me in the studio, Victor Gao. He is also Chair Professor at Suzhou University. Then we have with us Dr. Wang Wan, Executive Dean, Chongyang Institute for Financial Financial Studies, Renmin University of China. And we have with us Professor Chen Fang, who is Director of Research and Development and also Senior Research Fellow at the National Strategy Institute at Tsinghua University. Thank you so much, professors, for joining us. And thank you, Senator Mushahid Hussain. So now, without further ado, uh, Senator Mushahid Hussain, the critical questions uh, that we want to find out the answers to are really, uh, briefly, what happened? You were in the parliament when the vote was taking place. And I can tell you that millions of Pakistanis worldwide were watching. Um, it has been a historic moment in Indeed, uh, but it has also been a stage of political polarization, political division somehow. So if you can talk a bit about what led to these developments, what happened, and then the cabinet was just announced. I think we are a bit closer to being able to predict what kind of policies will shape up. And then uh, lastly, uh, on what is the way forward for Pakistan's foreign policy, especially the China-Pakistan economic corridor, please. Good afternoon and uh, ni hao to friends in China and greetings from Islamabad to all those who are listening in to this very important and timely webinar organized by the China Center, Center for China and Globalization. Thank you, Zoom, for the initiative. And I'm very pleased to be in such august company as the esteemed Mr. Victor Gao, uh, Mr. Chen Fang, and uh, Dr. Wang Wen. And I look forward to a very uh, positive interaction. And I, for me, it will be a great learning experience because 
I first went to China when I was a teenager. I was 16 or 17. It was the days of the Cultural Revolution almost 50 years ago. And I'm lucky to see China's transformation since the days of Chairman Mao, since the days of the great Deng Xiaoping, and now President Xi Jinping. And I think I'm one of the very few people, foreigners, who are still living, who have actually met the Gang of Four in the Cultural Revolution, Madam Chiang Ching, Chang Chung Chiao, Wang Hongwen, and Yao Wen Yuan, and along with Mr. Chen Boda in those days. So I was a student who first went there, and then I, it's for me, it's always a learning experience. And today, I think it's a very auspicious day, 20th of April, because on 20th of April 2015, President Xi Jinping paid a historic visit to Pakistan. And he made a speech to the Pakistan parliament on 20th of April 2015. And uh, that was when the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPAC, which is the flagship of the Belt and Road Initiative, which is probably the BRI is probably the most important diplomatic and developmental initiative of the 21st century, that was when it was really taking off. And I was very fortunate that that same day, President Xi Jinping awarded to me, honored me with an award of the Five Principles of Peaceful Coexistence Award. So this is an auspicious timing also when we are having this conference. Uh, before I go to your questions, I think I'll, I'd like to give the context of the unique, special relationship between Pakistan and China which probably has no parallel in the annals of international relations between two neighbors with different social systems, unequal in size, but joined together by a common iron brotherhood based on mutuality of interests, common values, and common worldviews. Pakistan-China relations, which started in the days of Chairman Mao and Premier Zhou Enlai, especially when the time came when uh, Ambassador Geng Biao was here. And Ambassador Geng Biao was the one who really built this relationship. And later on, he was defense minister. And he came in 1978, and the Karakum Friendship Highway was inaugurated by Mr. Geng Biao in uh, September 1978. So this relationship is not tactical, Pakistan-China relations. It's not transactional. It's not directed against anybody. It is based on that commonality of interests. We support each other's core interests. And Pakistan has always stood by China. And China has always stood by Pakistan. And you can see when the Pew, the American uh, public opinion firm, did a survey of uh, uh, different countries' opinions, Pakistan was number one among the people having a positive view of China. 83% of Pakistanis view China very positively. And the same survey showed that 72% of Pakistanis view the United States of America negatively. 83% of Pakistanis view China as their best friend, close partner, and 72% of Pakistanis view uh, China, uh, United States of America in a negative light. And this is a public opinion survey. So this should be very clear. And uh, irrespective of any changes in the region, in the world, or either in China or in Pakistan, the relationship is robust and resilient and has been moving forward. And this remains the case even till today. So this I would like to make it very clear. And uh, when Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif took office after the vote of no confidence was passed, which was done through the Parliament of Pakistan in a a peaceful and democratic and constitutional manner. The first day, his first meeting was with the ambassador of China, acting ambassador of China, where Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif announced that China is our closest friend and strongest partner and reaffirmed Pakistan's strong and resolute commitment to preserving, promoting, and protecting the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC, and in fact, expanding it to different horizons, different domains, and taking it forward at what he called the Pakistan speed. Because Mr. Shahbaz Sharif, when CPEC job, and he was uh, acclaimed as a person who pushed it with a lot of strength. So this, I think, is a very important element that needs to be understood uh, by our friends in China, 
that there are three issues in Pakistan on which there is a complete national consensus and broad-based popular support. The issue of Kashmir, which we have with India long-standing. The nuclear issue, that we have the right to have a nuclear weapon, which is important as a deterrent for our national security. And the third one is relations with China, especially CPAC. These three areas are on one area in which above party lines, whether it's the government or the opposition, whether it's a civilian government or a military government, whatever the shape of government, whoever is in office in Pakistan, relations with China is above party lines as enjoying across the board popular support among the political parties, provinces, and all the shades of opinion and in our system also. So that uh, relationship cannot be changed. In fact, it can only be strengthened. And uh, I would say that the uh, regional context and the geopolitical context accounts for that. Now, what happened in Pakistan was largely uh, internally driven Pakistan politics. Pakistan is a very vibrant, as you know, democracy among the Muslim countries. Uh, there are different shades of opinion. Mr. Imran Khan came to power in 19, 2018 with 32% of the popular support and uh, with the largest party in parliament. And he assumed office as prime minister. But 68% of Pakistanis did not vote for him or voted for other parties. So there was a very strong opposition also to his government. And uh, there were issues of the economy and issues of political polarization. And then uh, uh, some of his allies slipped away from him and he lost the majority in the parliament. And that majority was then transformed into a minority. And then those who had gone to the other side, to the opposition, they became the government. And the government was formed with a two-seat majority. You need 172 votes out in Pakistan's parliament, the lower house, uh, to have the government. And uh, they had 174. So this was the context of that. So we should be very clear that it was because of those reasons. And then for the new government, the main challenges are going to be, I would say, three. Number one, giving the country a healing touch, because there's a lot of polarization, there's a lot of uh, tussle, and that is not good for the country's uh, political stability, so that that healing touch is needed. The politics of consultation and cooperation should give way to the politics of, uh, uh, in place of the politics of confrontation. That's the number one challenge, which is political giving the country a healing touch. The second challenge is the economy, which is still in dry straits. We are dependent on the IMF and the World Bank. Uh, we have shortages of reserves. We have inflation. We have unemployment. So that needs to be catered to. And the third one is the challenge of the regional neighborhood. Our neighborhood is very volatile. We have seen that um, there are changes take place in the neighborhood. On one side, we have an unstable Afghanistan. And on the other side, on the Eastern Front, we have a very belligerent and militaristic India, uh, which is uh, trying to be aggressive. Uh, uh, and uh, we feel that this is an important context which needs to be understood, that when we talk of Pakistan and Pakistan-China relations, which will, by the way, you talked of change in foreign policy, there's no change in Pakistan-China relations. That will remain very, very strong. And that, in fact, if there's any change, it will be changed for the better and that it will become stronger, deeper, and expand faster. So that should be very, very clear. And uh, we also see a global context, which is important to understand. I see three global trends which are of geopolitics which are relevant. We see the retrenchment of American power in the region. In this broader Middle East or Muslim world region, the retrenchment is evident in uh, this region. Uh, in, after the defeat of the Americans in Afghanistan, we see it also in the broader Middle East, their relations with the Gulf countries, especially Saudi Arabia, China, with Turkey. So their retrenchment of American power, which is linked with, the, in my view, the decline of the West. By West, I mean Europe and the United States. You see a certain decline. And I'm a one who was educated in America. I studied in Georgetown University in Washington. I spent four years there. So I go back and forth to the US. 
The US I see today is beyond recognition. It's very divided, it's polarized, and it has weakened America's international image and clout. And Europe also is very divided these days, as you can see. So that is one trend. Then we see the peaceful rise of China, which is there, and China's diplomatic and political footprint can be seen from the Solomon Islands to Saudi Arabia. China is there, China has developed on uh, through hard work, and you can see that out of 193 countries uh, which are members of the UN, 130 countries have more trade with China than they have in the United States today. And the Belt and Road Initiative of President Xi Jinping, the DRI, is today the most important developmental and diplomatic initiative of the 21st century, which is linked with connectivity among different countries, cultures, and civilizations as a positive development, bringing people together on one platform. And the third trend is a disturbing trend. Uh, there is talk of a new Cold War. And this new Cold War we see already in Europe, uh, focusing on Ukraine vis-a-vis -vis Russia. And in a, there's also talk of an Asian NATO, the Quad, the AUKUS, AUK, US, Australia, UK, and the US. And uh, NATO in the 2030 reports, uh, which was issued last November, says they even talk of China as a threat apart from Russia, although China is not part of the North Atlantic, it's part of Asia. And Asia Pacific is now termed as Indo-Pacific because they want to rope in India and Japan and Australia and other countries to uh, have talk of containment of China. So this kind of talk we feel is um, uh, not acceptable to countries in the region because after four decades of conflict on Afghanistan, the region needs peace, security, and stability. And that is why regional countries assembled in China last month on 30th of March with Mr. Wang Yi as the foreign minister hosting them, the neighbors of Afghanistan. So to bring peace because after the US exit, it's the responsibility of the neighboring countries. And so we feel that regional countries should decide the uh, destiny of the region and of Asia. And we see the resurgence of Asia because the 21st century is the Asian century. And China and Pakistan are strong partners in this Asian century to build a better tomorrow with no overlords and no underlords. So I will complete on that count and I look forward to a very positive interaction. Thank you so much for honoring me with this invitation. And it's a pleasure and delight to be uh, with my Chinese friends virtually. And I hope to see them in person soon also, sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Mushahid Hussain. And uh, I'll just briefly try to give a recap of uh, the three, for instance, you started with the domestic situation and uh, the real process of uh, how, how the former prime minister would, was voted out, uh, how the popular vote was 68%, uh, the other parties. And uh, the challenges, of course, uh, the three key challenges include a, a healing touch. We are uh, in a phase of political polarization relatively. So how can that be uh, that can be reduced and how can there be a better consensus uh, and more unity uh, in the domestic political front. And then we have economic challenges and we know that CPEC has been envisioned to address the root causes of the economic challenges. So that's also why we see a, a consensus in the country on CPEC and a proceeding forward with CPEC. There's also a concept of Shabbat speed because as chief minister, uh, of uh, Punjab, Shabash Sharif uh, was a very efficient and very effective administrator as well. So I think that is something which is being viewed positively. And then thirdly, the challenge is the region. Also, you mentioned the global trends that we are experiencing and how in this region, at least, uh, we need to move forward um, away from politicizing issues and really towards economic uh, cooperation and better connectivity. That is the future, that is the vision of the Asian century. So now let me warmly welcome uh, Mr. Victor Gao, uh, Center for China and Globalization's Vice President, also uh, Chair Professor at Suzhou University, uh, for your remarks, for your comments on the uh, on the current developments and also interaction with Senator Musha. Uh, thank you very much, Zul. <clears throat> uh, this is Victor Gao. <clears throat> Excuse me. First of all, please allow me to uh, extend our warm welcome to all the speakers and the panelists for this very important CCP webinar on China-Pakistani relations. On behalf of President Wang Huiyao and uh, Mabel Miao, who is our Secretary General, we want to uh, re 
commit ourselves to doing our best to reinforce China-Pakistani friendship and brotherhood. And uh, I listened very carefully to Senator Saeed's important opening speech. Senator Saeed does not need recommendation or introduction in China. His household name is well known. And uh, I also enjoy his conversation in one of our common WeChat groups, for example. And I think he uh, made all the right comments. And I think uh, the recent uh, uh, internal affairs which happened in Pakistan leading to the change of the prime ministership was viewed by China as purely a domestic affair in Pakistan. And uh, the end result is that China-Pakistani relations have been more reinforced and more strengthened. And uh, this is made known not only to people here in China, but also in Pakistan, and also to all the other countries in the world. That is, China-Pakistani relations are truly all-weather friendship and solidarity and uh, uh, for example, whatever you name it. And it can withstand whatever pressure points domestically or internationally. So this is something that we want to congratulate Pakistan as well as China for having such very excellent and very strong relations. Uh, uh, allow me to mention one thing. I made my only visit to Pakistan back in 1986 when I was with the Chinese Foreign Ministry. And we went there to meet with President Ziaul Haq at the time. And we also signed one of the agreements between China and Pakistan, which led to the eventual opening of the Hunchlapu Mountain Pass, which now is a very important passageway in the CPAC uh, corridor, basically. So I think uh, all these years, I followed the situation in Pakistan with strong personal interest. And one of my mooring anchors is this visit to Pakistan. And I look forward to more visits to your great country. Now, when we are uh, focusing on the military operation or war in Ukraine, uh, one thing which is very interesting is that Russia has emphasized that whatever that is happening in Ukraine marks the beginning of a new international order. Now, if you listen very carefully to what Washington has to say, they basically say the international order after the Ukraine war will be significantly different from whatever international order before the outbreak of the military conflicts in, Af uh, in Ukraine. So what are Russia on the one hand and the United States on the other hand having in mind about the international order? Now we know that China is one of the founding fathers of the current international order established uh, on the ashes of the Second World War. This is why China is a one of the five permanent member states of the United Nations Security Council. China does not want to rock the boat. China now is actually a fierce defender of the current international order. What China is opposed to is any single country try to dictate terms to all the other countries. And in this respect, I think what the senator mentioned about the five principles of peaceful coexistence is really the one of the most important pillar of the current international order. Countries need to respect each other. And I think I'm personally very agonized by the recent tendency of some country try to divide the world into two blocks. One, what they call democracy, and they forgot that China is a democracy with our Chinese characteristics. I constantly explain to people in the United States, how can you expect to achieve modernization without democracy? And how can you really expect to see the profound transformation of China without the Chinese people having democratic rights? So I think uh, uh, try to build up one block and exclude China from that block, putting a label on democracy for those countries is not reflecting the realities on the ground. Now, on the other hand, they want to set up another block, putting countries like Russia and many other countries into it. They sometimes also want to drag China into that block. Again, this is completely 
uh, not reflecting the realities on the ground. I think this is dangerous and this is really fueling the fire of war rather than encouraging peace, not only as far as Ukraine is concerned, but also as far as world peace and development are concerned. Now, I want to uh, uh, add a point to uh, the distinguished the senator. I think given the fact that the international order, whatever you define it right now is in great flux and it may actually change uh, in a fundamental way going forward. Uh, I think maybe it is time for Pakistan or for distinguished statesmen like Senator Saeed to consider that while we firmly believe in the strength and uh, uh, of the solidarity and uh, camaraderie and uh, brotherhood of China, Pakistan, whether we have reached a point that China, Pakistani friendship should be pushed to China, Pakistani friendship plus, what does this mean? This means that Pakistan could really create conditions to make sure that Pakistan is not only Pakistan. Pakistan can also represent, for example, the Muslim world or the Islamic world or uh, some Arab countries, even though Pakistan itself is not an Arab country, but it is very influential in the Arab world. So I think maybe Pakistan or distinguished uh, statesmen like Senator Saeed can play this very unique role to make sure that China, Pakistani friendship is also more widely felt in the Muslim world, in the Islamic world, in the Arab world. And this will be good for China on the one hand, but this will also reflect the leadership role of Pakistan and also the important role that Pakistan occupies in the Islamic world, in the Arab world, in the Muslim world. Because I think anyone with the decency of the mind looking at China-Pakistani friendship and brotherhood can conclude in a fair way that China is not an enemy of the Muslim world. China is not an enemy of the Islam world. China is not an enemy of the Arab world. China considers itself as brothers and sisters of Pakistan and all the other Muslim countries, Islamic countries, the Arab countries. Therefore, while there are countries in the world which want to sow this discord between China and the Islam world, China and the Arab world, China and the Muslim world, especially focusing on, for example, Xinjiang, I think they will fail because true brothers and sisters in Pakistan can be really loud and eloquent witnesses to this kind of solidarity between the Chinese people and the Muslim people, Islamic people, the Arab people, for example. Anyone who accused China as an enemy of the Muslim world or the uh, Islamic world are not telling the truth. They are false witnesses in a sense. Now, another point I want to share or consult uh, Senator uh, Saeed is that maybe beyond this circle of the Islamic countries, Muslim countries, or Arab countries, I think there are uh, more countries in the world. So I hope maybe Senator Saeed or Pakistan as a country can also consider promoting something like uh, uh, Friends of China, let's say, if assume we use this as a, as, a, as, a, as a label, so that in the world of today and tomorrow, more and more countries will be happy and will be proud to consider themselves as friends of China. This is more urgent and more necessary because there are very explicit designs try to split the world into two blocks and they want to put China into one block to be isolated and to be sequestered, etc. This is unfair to China. This is unfair to the world. This definitely will take a lot of steam out of global economic uh, development and global trade. So I hope eventually there will be a new phenomenon where more countries will consider themselves as proud friends of China. This is not something false 
This will be something new. This will be something genuinely felt from the bottom of their heart. Why? How can you really explain the fact that after 44 years of economic development opening to the outside world and political and economic reform in China, China now is the largest trading partner with more than 130 countries in the world. This phenomenon is exactly the flip side of what the United States were back in 1978. Something must be happening over the past four decades or so to lead to such profound transformation in China, uh, uh, completely transforming itself. And uh, this is actually something that countries like the United States and EU member states should be proud of because they were involved in this process. But it is dangerous for them to try to isolate China. Therefore, my personal great expectation for Senator Said and Pakistan is that you will step up to this great historical challenge and create and unleash a new movement in the world so that people will just tell the world what they feel in the bottom of their heart and consider themselves to be friends of China, to be proud friends of China. And I hope this will really uh, uh, prevent uh, this very vicious division of the world into two opposing blocks from happening. Thank you very much. Again, salute to you, Senator Said. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, that was Mr. Yeah, so I think uh, I suggest that maybe we can go uh, forward to uh, Professor Wang and then Professor Chen for their, uh, uh, for whatever the uh, questions and also comments. And then uh, we can come back to you, Senator. Is that okay? Yes, so sir. now let's give the floor. Thank you. So now let's uh, give the floor to Dr. Wang Guan, who is Executive Dean, Chongyang Institute for Financial Studies, Renmin University of China. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Jun. Uh, thank you uh, for the invitation uh, from uh, CCG. And also, uh, very nice to see you again, Senator. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still remember that uh, maybe six years ago in Beijing, uh, when you visited in Beijing, I added your WeChat. And uh, you often yes. uh, praise in my, uh, in my WeChat yes. uh, friend circle. Uh, uh, so nice to see you. But long uh, time fly so quickly uh, we have uh, we have didn't met, met uh, in person uh, for a long for a long years so i i totally agree with you that uh, maybe uh, we we hope that uh, the pandemic uh, passed uh, as soon as possible then we can uh, discuss uh, face by face and also yeah. I, uh, I i totally agree with uh, 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 victor gao's uh, thinking i think nowadays the the condition the world condition become um, much more dangerous than before because uh, if we look at the history, the dangers in history are, are often come from uh, five uh, five aspects. Uh, first, there's a military war. Second, is the food uh, fam uh, famine. Uh, uh, third, is a uh, uh, economic crisis and and uh, and the pandemic and the climbing uh, climbing disaster. And we we didn't we didn't expect that in the spring of this year. The five, uh, uh, because of the break of the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine, the five aspects are experiencing unprecedented uh, resonance happened uh, simultaneously. Uh, and the world may be uh, on the eve of the world dangerous moment. This is a very, very uh, dangerous moment. Maybe the war uh, will, will uh, become uh, worse and worse. And so uh, I think obviously, uh, the American, because the American uh, United States is declining, so the United States want want to uh, provoke more and more crisis in the world, and more and more uh, uh, the 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 regional war in the in the world. Then United States can achieve a lot of uh, interest from those uh, regional crises. So this is uh, we should caution about it, and uh, we just are very careful about uh, the next war maybe in Taiwan. So this is a we should we should we should uh, uh, take care, and, uh, and and also as we know that the, the uh, we all know that uh, Pakistan is China's friend, China's China's brother, China's partnership, and also Pakistan is a country uh, which uh, China's uh, China invest most uh, in uh, one belt one road initiative. So, uh, uh, so I just want to uh, ask one question to uh, to uh, Senator uh, Hussein. Uh, one question. This question, I think, for is very concerning, 
very very concerned, uh, very very uh, uh, interested by uh, by uh, Chinese people and uh, Chinese friends. That is, uh, we we hope that uh, Pakistan can keep the stable uh, 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 political condition and also the social stability. We just are very concerned about those uh, program uh, which uh, China invest because we because China hope that uh, Pakistan can develop uh, at, uh, very very quickly uh, and so but but we just worry about those uh, programs uh, the uh, the safety I mean uh, so my question is to Senator uh, Hussein that can you uh, answer uh, the the condition for uh, uh, for those uh, programs which uh, China invested in the past ten years. So, is there any uh, is there any uh, 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 hidden peril uh, of uh, those uh, uh, condition uh, of those uh, programs? And also, uh, if uh, those programs uh, China invested will uh, meet the, uh, the the danger, how can uh, a Pakistan government uh, protect? the safety of those uh, programs. So this, I think I just uh, 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 ask the questions for for my friends, for for many uh, ordinary Chinese people, because they are very interested about it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for thank the you. invitation again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Wang. Uh, definitely a very uh, important question, especially because uh, we're talking about the phase two as well in this, right? Um, the relocation of industry. So looking forward to Senator Mushai Desan's response to this. And now let's warmly welcome Professor Chen Fang, who is Director of Research and Development as well as Senior Research Fellow at the National Strategy Institute, Tsinghua University, so where I'm from as well. So please. I think you're muted. Uh, we, yes, yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, okay, Thank you. okay. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, so, yes. uh, dear Mrs. Said. Yes, good afternoon. Salam <laughs> alaikum. Well, I'm so happy to to, to be invited. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, today is a very special date. Yeah, uh, seven years ago. Yes. Uh, yes, President Xi has visited Islamabad, and uh, uh, yes, it's a very successful tour. Yes, successful visit to Pakistan. Uh, for me, yes. I'm studying. Uh, I'm studying about South Asia for a very long, long time. Yes, and I uh, recently, yes, I also read some articles uh, published in Pakistan media and also in uh, in South uh, South China Morning Post. It's about the the third uh, foreign minister meeting about the Afghanistan. Yes. Uh, today, yes, I want to talk about the some uh, some issues. Yes. Uh, which is also my personal studies. The first is uh, from a Chinese perspective, how to see the political changes in the Pakistan. I think, uh, yes, after four years in office, uh, Mr. Uh, I.K. Ibrahim yeah, became the first prime minister, uh, yes, in the Pakistan history, but it be ousted, ousted by, the, uh, by the parliament, yeah. I think there are uh, uh, domestic matters such as intensified party conflicts, party struggle, uh, and the weak uh, people's livelihood and the cracks uh, in the military and the political institution. Yeah. Uh, there, there, but actually, there's also some international factors. But in general, yeah, domestic factors, uh, I think, is, is the main, yes, in main cause. Uh, far greater than the interference of uh, external factors. Uh, four years ago, yes, the Imran Khan, the PTI party, rise, uh, breaking down the traditional ruling patterns by the two major parties, such as, yeah, that is the M uh, Muslim League and the uh, PPP, yes. Uh, brings new changes, actually, to the Pakistani particles. But over the past four years, the party struggle not easing down. Instead, I think it's intensified. Uh, we, we can say that uh, on the one hand, yes, many of the Imran Khan's policies were considered by the, the opposition parties as a retaliation uh, to surprise the distant 
and promoting uh, the opposition camp to abandon its past difference and join together to fight. And on the on other hand, compared with, I think, compared with the Muslim League and the PPP, there is obvious the weakness of the PTIs, such as the grassroots construction, the social mobilization ability, and combined with uh, the COVID-19 yes, outbreak, uh, yes, the Russia-Ukraine war, yes, intensified the global supply chain a fracture and inevitably a drop of foreign exchange uh, reserves and uh, the fuel, uh, fuel prices higher and the necessities prices and the economical yes, inflation and many other problems, domestic problems. So the opposition parties think this opportunity, yes, to in enlarge these opportunities, yes, yes, to fight back. In addition, I think the military, yes, the Pakistan military definitely is, has always been a uh, key factor to affect in the, the direction of the Pakistani yes, political situations. And the, we, we know, yes, recently, yes, the gap has widened between the Pakistan top, uh, top military general, uh, General, yes, Ajwa, yes, and, and, uh, and the Ibrahim on the Pakistani, Pakistani, yes, national security policies and the foreign policies. I think the opposition, yes, parties also thinks it's a good, good opportunity to driven the Imrahan, yes, far power. And the second issue is, yes, about the next trend of uh, Pakistan and China relations. I think is, that is, uh, yes, no problem, yes. Yeah, because history can tell us, yeah, uh, last year we celebrate the 70th anniversary of China and Pakistan diplomatic yes, uh, relations. In, yeah, we uh, I participate a lot of yes, celebrations. Yes, why our relations? Yes, that is rocket. Uh, is rocket solid? Yes, I think our relations is not creation. Yes, not creation of by one or uh, one or two leaders, no by uh, military, uh, and no by the material and the money, yes, building the castle, the castle in the air. I think our relations, yes, is by a strategical trust formed by the both sides in the change situations. Our relations is by the civil societies, yes, transformed from generation to generations. As the, uh, Mr. Senator just mentioned this very, I fully agree, yes. Our relations is the international, uh, yes, good example and the pattern is yes, for how the two nations, yes, the different systems, yes, and uh, a big and small, yes. But we, yes, enjoy a good friendship and brotherhood, yes, for a long time, for 70 years. And as for the new prime minister, I think everybody knows is the prime minister Sabas is old friend, is 100% old friend and a good, good friend of China, yes. Over years, he himself and his brothers, yes, former prime minister, yes, Nawaz Sharif, yes, have been, yes, yes, I think very active advocate and the professional of China and Pakistan relations, friendship whether they're in the central government or in the Punjab local governments, they have a very deep history links with China. And the CPAC, yes, we know, yes, was officially launched, was officially launched in the party's administration, yes. Yeah, I think uh, for the future uh, relations, I think there's no bad, no best, and no limits of our, of our bilateral relations, only better, from better to better, yes. And then the third issue is about the CPAC next trends. I think the CPAC, uh, yes, the most outstanding corporations uh, achievements of China-Pakistan relations in the past years, nine years. And that is very good significance, yeah, to further expanding Pakistan Yes, uh, China uh, economic relations, and also uh, uh, further yes, strengthening all weather 
a brotherhood, strategic cooperation, yes, partnership, yes, for the benefit of our two peoples. And it go beyond, yes, I think beyond the scope of the two countries. Now the CPAC entered the second phase. We are called the yes, high quality uh, construction phase. Yeah. I think as a win-win project, yeah, I think the new government will do better. My suggestion including is, yes, and the first implement the existing projects with high quality. The second, make the existing projects better benefit the people livelihood. And third, steadily push forward the extension such as to the Afghanistan. And the fourth, I agree with uh, uh, Professor Gauss viewpoints. points. The China Pakistan plus, yeah. My suggestions, how to promote the participation of the third parties in uh, such as uh, the Gulf state, the, the Saudi Arabia, the UAE, yes. And the prime minister, the new prime minister, I think, I believe will use his personal very good connections with the leaders in the Arab states, yeah, to make our CPAC project, uh, yes, uh, uh, from better to better, yeah. But no, I, I should say, yes, uh, I should note it, yeah, now, recently, the TPP, the TPP, the, um, yeah, they claimed that uh, they were launched in the Ramadan, yes, uh, Ramadan offensive against the military, yeah. So it worries me. And it is also uh, worries me about the safety of the CPAC, the project, yeah. Um, <clears throat> for the last uh, issues, I think the last issues, issues is also my questions. It's about yeah. the India-Pakistan relations. Uh, because I, uh, everybody knows that during uh, Prime Minister's elder brother, Labat uh, Sharif government, the two countries have signed the uh, uh, Lahore declarations. So the future, uh, future relations between Pakistan and India will Yes, will be is done or not? And the second is how about the relations with the Afghanistan? Uh, yes, Afghanistan Taliban regime. Yes, because now the recent the skirmish happens uh, in the border. Yes. Before my ending, I want to say yes. Uh, Pakistan is uh, our close neighbors. Yes, the two countries uh, has deep friendship. Of what we call a higher higher the mountain. Yes, deeper this. Uh, the sea, yes, sweeter than the honey and harder than steel. The China, the Pakistan, the strategic cooperative, yes, partnership with the reputation, we call the four goods, the good laborers, the good brothers, and, and the good friends, and also good partners. And for our Chinese, we sincerely hope uh, the Pakistan uh, brother can very quickly survive the, the period of our political Term turmoil and maintain uh, the social stability and the economic uh, pers prosperity. Yes. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Professor Chen. So Senator Mushahid Hussain, we have uh, we have quite a few questions uh, that obviously Mr. Victor Gao and Dr. Wang Wan and Dr. Chen Fang, all of them have posed. Uh, so maybe without further ado, actually it is ten minutes to three right now. And uh, if, uh, if we can take this time just to address them one by one, um, how China and Pakistan can further strengthen this partnership uh, and really stand uh, more effective against the forces that are destabilizing the global order uh, that obviously threatens all of us. So how can both countries play a more significant role? What kind of partnerships and how can we envision this partnership? Uh, the risks that CPEC faces, and there were quite a few detailed questions on these. So please, if you can. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for the very insightful presentations made by the three distinguished colleagues of mine on the panel. Uh, first of all, I'll start from the reverse order, the last first, Professor Chen Feng, and I think that uh, uh, what the sequence you have mentioned about uh, CPEC is well taken, and I also feel that your analysis of the change in Pakistan has been 
primarily driven by domestic factors is well taken. Yes, uh, first uh, CPEC should uh, uh, projects be completed, which have been largely completed. The first phase of CPEC is over. We are entering the second phase and CPEC should benefit local communities. 75,000 Pakistanis have gotten jobs. CPEC uh, infrastructure and energy projects have provided an enabling environment. CPEC has provided empowerment for women even in very far off places in Pakistan. Zoom, you should go there next time to Thar, where women are I driving dumper trucks and where you I'm know uh, coal is being mined and then it's generating electricity and then electricity is going to the national grid. So we have resolved some major issues in that regard. And Gawada port is up and running. So it's uh, something which is uh, put faith in a better tomorrow for the people of Pakistan. And also, you mentioned about the further expansion of CPEC. And I think that is also going to be in the offing. So as far as that uh, issue is concerned, CPEC is on the track. And I would say that the first briefings today, after the cabinet meeting, which is being held today in Islamabad, as we speak, is going to be on CPEC. Because Prime Minister Shabash Steve has given clear directions that we want updates, not just on what is happening and how to accelerate it further uh, at a faster pace, cutting through the red tape, which is an important element, unfortunately, in Pakistan. So that is number one. Uh, Dr. Wang Wen mentioned about uh, uh, what can be the uh, dangers or concerns. I think the concerns are that there are elements outside Pakistan in the neighborhood who are against Pakistan-China strategic partnership. And I would like to name two of them, the US and India. And they have been trying to destabilize CPAC at times. They have trying to undermine that. The US has also passed what is called the Strategic Competition Act in the US Congress. And under the Strategic Competition Act, they have a fund every year called Countering China Influence Fund for $300 million. That is for propaganda against China and against China's partners and friends, of which Pakistan is number one. So I think we are concerned about that. And often there have been attempts to destabilize uh, through the Indian intelligence also. So this uh, is a concern which is there. The internal factors which were there, uh, there, there is a strong security element because a lot of the attacks which were planned were planned from outside Pakistan by the forces inimical to CPAC. So within Pakistan and the Pakistani system, whether it's the civil or the military or the provinces or the federal government, on that, we are very clear that CPAC has to be taken forward effectively. Now, coming to Dr. Victor Gaon, I think he, uh, I would say great minds think alike because uh, I have recently written an article uh, which I will send to Zoom and please pass it on to Mr. Victor Gao. It's called China and the Muslim World. And I mentioned that the article was in the context of Mr. Wang Ji's visit to Islamabad on 22nd of March, where he was honored as a guest of honor to address, for the first time ever, the annual foreign ministers conference of the OIC, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which is 57 members. So when he talks of China-Pakistan Friendship Plus, I've already talked of a Pakistan-China-Saudi Arabia triangle, which is emerging. And you know, last week, President Xi had a very good conversation with the, uh, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, on 15th of April, I think it was, a telephone conversation. And we have been very clear that this Xinjiang card being played by certain Western countries is unacceptable. It is interference, it is propaganda, and we reject it. And among Muslim countries, Pakistan has been leading in that regard. So uh, we uh, have also mentioned that. And uh, uh, it's very interesting when Chairman Mao appointed uh, General Genbiao as ambassador to, of China to Pakistan. He said, look after Pakistan, because Pakistan will be China's a window to the West, to the outside world. And we are playing that role now, what Chairman Mao had said 60 years ago. So in that context, also he mentioned about democracy. On democracy, there was a survey by Harvard University, Ash Center, July 2020. And that was a survey of Chinese public opinion over a 15 year period from 2003 to 2018. And they said that 90% of Chinese people are either fully satisfied or more than satisfied 
with governments in China under the Communist Party of China, the CPC. So I think that the facts are very clear. And uh, if 15 million Chinese go abroad every two as tourists, all 15 million return back to China after their tourism. So this kind of American propaganda does not wash because the US has been using this as a certain kind of a car to take it forward. So I feel that uh, it's important that, uh, especially uh, now with China's uh, role in the BRI and Pakistan-China strategic partnership, uh, Mr. I would like to assure Mr. Victor Gao that we are playing that role already. Uh, Already when the meeting took place on 30th of uh, March uh, in China, hosted by Mr. Wang Ji, the neighbors of Afghanistan, there was a separate meeting of Pakistan, Afghanistan, and China, trilaterally, focusing on CPEC and how to expand it further. There were two other questions focusing on um, uh, India. India is very interesting. India, after India militaristic and belligerent policies toward China. They tried to provoke a clash with China and Taiwan in May 2020 and January 2021, for which Americans gave them the intelligence support, by the way, because Americans now have a strategic partnership with India, which is military and intelligence also. Indians came to us and they asked for a ceasefire according to the line of control. And this ceasefire, because they were fearing a two-front situation between China and Pakistan together, and this ceasefire is now holding on February 2021. And I'm uh, hopeful that after Mr. Wang Ji's visit to Delhi, uh, when he went there on 25th of March, he said that let's keep the border issue aside with India and let's try to have normal relations and better relations. And I hope India accepts that offer because uh, India has $125 billion worth of trade with uh, China. So we feel that India's policies, unfortunately, uh, is still they have to make a choice. Uh, whether they want to be part of the American game plan of so-called containment of China, which goes against the tide of history. So they should not be on the wrong side of history. But I would also like to mention for the first time in 25 years, Pakistan, China, and India are on the same page on a global issue, Ukraine. All three of our countries abstained in the UN uh, voting and also the UN Human Rights Council on the issue of Ukraine. So I think there is a certain convergence and that we don't want the European Cold War, which is taking place in Ukraine, to come to Asia. And we talk of a new international order. I think that uh, uh, we have not condoned uh, what Putin did because uh, we feel that there should not be any violations of any country's territorial integrity and sovereignty. But we do not want to be part of any bloc politics in Cold War. And I think the way forward is what is the vision of China about the new international order which is based on UN principles, the principles of the UN Charter, the principles of international law, and the five principles of peaceful coexistence, and on which there is equality and reciprocity of relationship and win-win cooperation, not based on block politics against this country and that country. And after so many years of conflict, where America squandered $6.5 trillion on the so-called war on terror, killing a million Muslims and also devastating the whole region with 342,000 bombs, drones, and missiles in Muslim countries which have been devastated. We cannot afford a new Cold War. And these are figures given not by me, but by the American University, the Brown University, a course of conflict study which was issued in November 2021. So I think what China is giving is a vision, and China is not against any country. China has not invaded any country, not occupied any country, not interfered in any country. If there's cooperation based on mutual benefit, we should welcome that. And that is what most of the third world countries and most of Asia wants and most of the, what the international community wants. So I think that is the way to go in the future. I think uh, lastly, I want to mention, I still remember reading that President Eisenhower, before he left office, on 17th of January, 1961, he made a speech. He said, Americans should watch out for the military industrial complex, which is always looking for enemies. It was the Soviet Union in the Cold War, then it was Muslim countries, now they're looking for China. And with a budget of $784 billion, military budget, I think that this kind of uh, containment and Indo-Pacific and these strategies, 
these are tried, tested, and failed strategies because they try to have a strategy to demonize China, to de damage China's image, to destabilize China and friends of China. So we don't we don't want to be part of that. We want to be part of a peaceful and prosperous future based on cooperation, not conflict and confrontation. And I think we are on the right side of history. And um, I think that time will prove us right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Mushahid Hussain. Uh, Mr. Victor Gao has, uh, would you like to make a comment to you? If that's, uh, we all, it's also 3, uh, 3 p.m. now. So uh, maybe we can take a few minutes with Senator Mushahid Hussain's. Yes, consent. I'm in the same time. Please, Mr. Gao. China I will be very, yeah, I will be very quick. I listened to what the Senator has to say very carefully. Two points. One is that it seems that Washington apparently is worried that they do not have enough enemies. And China is always worried that we do not have enough friends. And I think uh, on one important occasion, Pakistan stands up and say, if you cannot count on anyone, count on Pakistan. And this was really very moving in China. We always remember that. So if anyone else fails, Pakistan will be there together with China. And I hope this sentiment will be reciprocated here. Whatever or whichever country fails, China will be here shoulder to shoulder and back to back with Pakistan. Now, the other thing is that Senator mentioned uh, Chinese ambassador Geng Biao to Pakistan. And uh, the current Chinese president also reminded this uh, quite often uh, whenever he meets with Pakistani friends. Uh, General Geng Biao's son, Gen uh, Zhiyuan, is a good, great personal friend and family friend of mine. So when the Ooh. senator makes it to Beijing next time, he's in his- Next time I want to have senator. dinner with him at your place. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to set up a meeting so that you on behalf mm -hmm. of Pakistan and the great Pakistani people will meet with Mr. Gen Zhiyuan, who is the son mm -hmm. of General Gen Biao, former Chinese ambassador Gen Biao to Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I can assure you his family is a great friend and support supporter of China-Pakistan friendship. And I just hope China-Pakistan friendship going forward will be China-Pakistan friendship plus. And how much yes. this plus will be, Senator, I think we are very much in your great capable hands. Thank you very much. The sky is the limit, the sky is the limit, this plus sky is the limit. <laughs> Thank you. And once again, if, uh, Professor Wang Guan and Professor Chian Feng, if you would like to uh, share any thoughts or comments. Please, yeah. You're muted. Yeah. Uh, actually, I really learned a lot. Uh, uh, Senator, you, you really have a very uh, wide uh, strategic view and thinking. I uh, really learned a lot from you. But the, the, we we really hope that uh, the pandemic will uh, would, would pass there as soon as possible. Then we can invite you visit China again, and to know uh, and to share our experience in the in the in the past three years. It's very hard for us, but uh, we finally we are sure to finally uh, uh, pass the, the the difficulties, and then we can then we can share the the, the wonderful uh, experience and memories. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Look, look forward to that. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, uh, my feeling is, is can, yes, yes, uh, concentrate in one word, yes, but famous words. Yeah, Pakistan and the Chini, yeah, those things, Chinabad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Senator Mushahid Hussain, if any, anything further, any, uh, any final closing remarks you've already shared? <laughs> Uh, so much valuable insight. I think um, it's really a privilege, obviously, for us at the Center for China and Globalization to host you at a point when there were a lot of questions being raised globally. What exactly happened uh, 10 days after the vote? We have relatively better clarity in general, but what will be the future for China-Pakistan relations? Uh, many questions are being asked, and the fact that uh, scholars and generally people in China as well as Pakistan care for each other. We have a friendship that- But they should not worry. Pakistan-China relations are on track. They are strategic. Yes. They have a certain resilience irrespective. And in fact, it will be further strengthened. Because I mentioned the three issues in Pakistan today. Kashmir, the nuclear program of Pakistan and China, there's a complete across the board national 
popular consensus. So I think China-Pakistan relations are in safe hands. And in fact, it's now, as Mr. Victor Bergdau said, is yeah. China-Pakistan friendship plus. So let's take that forward, the plus part. Plus. The enthusiasm, energy is and there. On also, the don't forget, with the decline of the West, with the retrenchment of American power, we feel, in my view, Pakistan has now strategic space and more autonomy in the region to pursue these policies to preserve and protect its own interests and objectives, and especially in the region. And we are doing that uh, with uh, cooperation with uh, China on uh, Afghanistan. Also, we feel yeah. sanctions in Iran should be lifted. Central Asia, especially this connectivity. So I think a whole new world is opening up uh, for Pakistan-China relations. And also the, what I call the strategic triangle between Pakistan, China, and Saudi Arabia. So it's, it's you can see a, a multi faceted uh, uh, dimensions of this relationship. And as I said, sky's the limit. I look forward to learning more from my friends in China when I go there in person, sooner rather than later. Thank you, Zuna. Sooner. Thanks. Sooner. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Let's hope to let's hope to see you very soon in, in Beijing, in China. And let's hope we can also visit Pakistan very soon. Absolutely, Thank you so much. Please. Mr. Victor Gao has not come after 86. He needs a new oh. visit. <laughs> and Mr. Gell. It's all Dinner with Mr. Gill. Yes. <laughs> we look Thank forward you. to it. Thank you so much, Senator Mushahid. Thank you, Thank you to our uh, extraordinary panelists as well and our audience. Yes. Until next time, we will continue this conversation and understand with, I hope very soon, once again, with Senator Mushahid Hussain, what is this new strategic space and uh, yes. what can, how can China and Pakistan really make an increasingly positive impact as developments in the globe? Uh, we observe various developments on the global level. So thank you so much, Senator Mishahir. Thank, thank you, Zoom, you. for putting it together. Thank you, Zoom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.